Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the Transformers War for Cybertron Generation Selects Toy Accurate G1 Galvatron Colours. So what we're going to do with this video, we're going to unbox him live in a second, have a look at the entire contents of the packaging and I'm going to do loads with this to be fair, I'm going to have quite a bit of fun with this. So I'm going to do of course the obvious comparison with his original Generation 1 self. We can then do a comparison with him and other versions of him using the same mold. And then you'll have to see where I'm going with this, but then I'm going to do a comparison with him with the Toy Accurate Colors Cyclonus and the Toy Ac well, no, this is of course Sweeps from the Studio Series 86. And the reason for that is because his colors match the G1 Scourge much more than the actual Scourge toy. And indeed the original G1 cyclonus as well so as you can see and of course some other galvatron figures released down the generations toy line so quite a lot to get through with this video so as i'm putting these back i'd like to remind anybody who's not subscribed to this channel if i'd hit that subscribe button for me now please because it really will help me out and one other thing as well i need to say a huge huge thank you to duke nukem who is a subscriber and channel member and the reason for this is this is a belated um christmas present from him to myself i say belated and the reason for that is because we decided to hold off on the shipping during of course the christmas period um i initially asked him to purchase this figure for me uh, because i saw how cheap it was in america it was on sale and um yeah he very kindly went and got it me and said i didn't have to pay him which is an incredibly nice gesture and i want to thank him ever so much for it so also the box is a little bit damaged not his fault at all and that is why it's opened because he wanted to check the contents for me first to make sure it wasn't opened before shipping to me now we've of course got the old generation selects autobot logo on the front we've got the war for cybertron writing there and as i've already said he's already opened it for me thank you ever so much just to make sure that the contents inside as you can see are indeed fine so what I need to do now then is set him free from there and come straight back to you. Right then, so I've set him free from the packaging and I'm already loving, absolutely loving this figure. Now I'm already a big fan of this mould anyway. Um, and it's one of them figures that I just couldn't afford at the time when it came out originally. Um, so I missed out on it, to be fair. I suppose I made the decision because I already had the mould that I just let it go. And then as I said, I saw it really cheap on one of the videos that I did. Um, I think it was in a Walmart, to be fair. And it was like, it worked out at it, probably about a quarter of the price of what it was in the uk the first time around and the reason why i'm loving it is just yeah it is it's just the full full homage obviously to the original one as soon as i saw that in the packaging and i mean that is literally exactly i love it right down to the glistening inside it the original g1 so it, it's I've, if you could see my face now i've got this big daft grin on it because i just think it's great we've of course got the other two uh, double barrel guns which of course are combined to make the nemesis ship which again is spectacular but again all in black we've got the matrix which is green and this is of course to represent or rest, sorry, replicate i'm pretty sure it's the episode or the, or the comic book i'll confirm that in the next part of the same colors the instructions are of course huge and we've got the war for cybertron trilogy and we've got the stickers now i was in two minds about doing this but what i think i'm going to do i've just noticed there's a unicron one there as well I think what I'm going to do, because I've been in two minds of putting the stickers on this particular figure as well, I'm going to do a video putting the stickers on both of these, to be fair. Um, so let's have a quick look at him himself. Again, loving the fact we've got the red eyes, full articulation in the head. The shoulders will go all the way around, out to the side. Uh, we've got waist swivel. We've got hips. Again, full articulation. We've seen this figure four times now. This was, I think, the second version of him. Um, ankle tilt and rock. It's just a great, robust, really good feeling figure. Everything sort of tucks away neatly. Um, already said I'm a huge fan of this mould, so I'm slightly biased to it already. What we're going to do now, though, before we come back in a bit, attaching all his accessories and do some more comparisons, we're going to have a look at him in his alternate mode first and foremost. 
Okay, so he's in his pretty much alternate mode already. Quick apologies, no transformation process on this video. Uh, it's not in this video for a couple of reasons. One, to keep the main length of the video down, and two, is not to spoil it for people who don't want to see it. However, it's going to be separately uploaded, so you can have a look at it if you want to. Now, I've obviously only just noticed this rub sign, which again is just an amazing homage to the original figure. It looks like the Decepticon logo is coming through there. Um, I'll have a go at getting that a little bit better later on. Now, I've deliberately not put all the parts on because I'm going to show you how to do that. I've already pointed out, I love the fact this has got the sparkle detail in. And I am still got this. As I say, I'm loving it. It just looks so, so good. Now we can take the Matrix. And again, I just want to confirm the reason why it is green. And it is to replicate the Marvel Comics Creation Matrix colour. This will then fit in via that tab there at the front he says i've just missed it let's get it clicked in there you go so you can hold that there then we can take this part this was of course from the cannon and this will go in this hole here right mine perhaps because it's a new figure and it's not very play worn at all i think i'm gonna have to just adjust that quickly now that'll fit in and then it just yeah, it's just going to fit in. It's just, as I say, probably because it's brand new. I'm not going to force it, to be honest. Obviously, that should be clicked in. And you're looking to have, I suppose, the shark's fin at the back. You can now take the two blasters as well. And via the ports on here, we can then attach these in to these holes here as well. And that's it. That's going to click in there either side. And again, although it's a cannon, it's just armoring up the cannon even more. There we go. That's clicked in and it looks it looks good. I really like it. I've got to confess, I do think it looks way better without these on. Um, that's just, again, because of my, my personal opinion. I think it looks better like that. You could probably, could you attach them there? Yeah, maybe. I'm not going to. What I'm going to do, though, now is I'm going to bring up the Generation 1 version just for the comparison again to show you the colour of the toys etc um and i like the way the original one will surprise you it is huge it is so so much bigger than a lot of the figures that we get nowadays you can see the sparkle in that um, i suppose the feet part coming out here which obviously we can use if you wanted to to put somebody i suppose using it uh, or powering it rather is just the old handle of the original one Look, the rub sign is in exactly the same place. They've just done a really good job of trying to copy it. You can even do if you wanted to with this. This, of course, had the um, gun mode, which, of course, the new one didn't. So um, I'm just going to quickly show you how you could do that um, with this. Let's turn this right around and over. So this is how you would turn the G1 into a gun. Oh, sorry, making a load of noise. Yes, the ratchets on this are awfully loud, turning it round. And of course, this was the third mode that you would have seen if you had the Generation 1 figure. But obviously, they didn't have this uh, mode at all in this. However, you could, if you wanted to, you could manipulate it ever so slightly um, just by bringing these up and out of the way to the side and then holding it back like so so you sort of had the gun mode if you wanted to or you could even just literally fold them underneath and used this as a handle. So there's a couple of ways that you could still use it as a gun, but of course it is not intended to be used as a gun at all. Uh, it's just, as I say, a little bit of a homage, I suppose a bit of a fans mode to get the alternate mode of a gun. Right, one more thing to do then. Let's come back, have a look at him in the robot mode and do some more comparisons. Right then, we are back for the final time with him back in his robot mode and we're going to see how he looks and displays with his accessories and of course do some comparisons and display ideas. So first and foremost, we want to get his fusion cannon. We want to attach this back here. Oh, wrong way around. That goes in that end like so. And then you've got this tab here and this is going to go just on the side. I'm going to put it on the first part of the forearm, to be honest, and pop it there. Now, usually, um, and in the instructions, you can see pictures of this all the way attached to the back, like so, right on the back of his neck. But if you want to attach the matrix, you can't do that. You need a little bit of space over the back. And again, you can then pop this into the chest piece at the top. 
there you go so with that being in there then you can sort of hold it down with that as well but it does have a tendency to stick up and it's i suppose it just needs a little bit more play worn just to hold it down if i was going to put it i'd just detach it from there and i'd hang it round like so i think it looks slightly better if i was going to put it there i'm not though i'm going to take it off because i just don't think it looks um, as good in honesty now we've got these attachments here these two tabs on the back that should be yeah, clipped into there there we go and then of course we've got the cutouts here again either side and i think that these actually do look good um attached to the back of him while he's in robot mode i think they they you know exactly that i think when he's in the alternate mode they don't look too great um to be honest i probably still won't be attaching them here i probably will still be putting them how you're going to see in a second i'm going to join them together um and have them i suppose as a handheld gun right we've got loads of comparisons and i suppose display ideas now to do with this first and foremost let's have a look at the other uses of the mold so this is the first one this is the kingdom one with the battle damage this i think was the next one released and then I think this is the one after. There has been another one in Legacy, which I'm probably going to hunt down as well because I love my variants and I'm really, really am a big fan of this particular mould. Again, as you can see, they all look great. With that, I've just had it hanging down. With this one, I haven't put it on at all. Um, and again, this Canon, no, it doesn't have the sparkly bits in which that one does. Just wanted to double check that. Right, a couple of other things. So let's take these ones out of the way for now let's do the generation one toy oh i've just knocked the main fusion cannon off and again you'll see just how big this guy is he's, he's huge i'm gonna keep them in i keep all my errors in because it's you know we make mistakes right let's pop that there i need to push you all the way back just so you can fit in there now this is another figure that not many people will probably realize that was released as well they did actually do a cartoon accurate japanese release no we can't see i'm gonna have to lift this up there we go of the g1 figure as well so that's standing there then does look a little bit more like the kingdom one so there you go that's how they look but of course now what i really want to do is just put him with cyclonus and scourge although i'm going to be using sweep and as I said, the reason why I'm going to be using the sweep is purely because of the colour scheme. So what I might do is, I'm just trying to work out how I can do this and get it all inside. So maybe if I put that there, take these off the back so you can actually see him. No, I've got an idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the box like so. I'm going to definitely move the camera, don't worry. I'm going to pop Galvatron there. I'm then going to pop that version there and as i say don't worry i'm going to move the camera in a second let's just move that around i'm going to take toy accurate cyclonus that side sweep this side because it is more of the generation one color version of him and then of course bring in toy scourge and toy sorry g1 cyclonus let's have a look at these brilliant they look so so good together fantastic homages all the way through one more quick thing to do um and it's it's not even a real comparison to be fair the update and the upgrade of this figure compared to that one is just something on a different level they're nowhere near as good this version this mold is exactly that it's just on a different playing field so i think that is all i need to show you and discuss with this particular figure you can tell i like it you can tell i like the mold um and while it's so cheap i would strongly advise everybody getting out there and indeed if they don't have one getting one there you go guys this was the generation selects war for cybertron g1 toy accurate galvatron figure let me know what you think in the comments take care